G'day, Birdie here, and today with this bucket of bits and whatever this is, we'll be getting my giant rain up and running. This video is not intended to be an instructional video, as I am by no means a professional. If you would like a detailed explanation on how any of these tasks are completed correctly, then check the description. I'll put a link to Park Tools YouTube channel, as they have some really great videos that explain all you need to know. Today's task are to replace the chain, replace my broken derailleur and adjust both front and rear derailleur as this bike is in need of some TLC. For those of you that haven't seen my last upload, this tiny stick minced my derailleur on my last ride, hence the need of this video. I'm starting out by removing all the pieces that are being replaced. I don't have a master link on my chain so I can just cut the chain anywhere I want and rid of it. Next to go is the mangled derailleur. It's lasted five years, which is more than enough. I'll be keeping it in a spare parts bin just in case I need it in the future. I bought a new hanger to keep as a spare, but I noticed the new one is held on by two bolts instead of one. I fit the new, stronger hanger and kept the original as a spare. Using some cheap car wash, water and a toilet brush, I gave the rain a well deserved bath. Okay. This isn't the correct way to remove this plastic guard, but hey, I don't have the right tools for the job. I wedged a screwdriver into the top of the guard and hammered it all the way through until it resembled Pac-Man. Yoinked it off and to the bin it goes. Not that I don't trust the bike shop that built my bike, but for my own peace of mind, I'm not using my old chain as a reference length. I'm going to find the new chain length for myself. To do this, I have to remove the shock from the swing arm so that maximum length from the front and rear sprockets can be achieved. Once the wheel is held in place, I ran the chain through everything it needs to apart from the derailleur, making sure it's on the biggest gear on both front and rear sprockets. Pull the chain tight and find the link that would fit best. Then add an extra link to the measurement. This should be an ideal chain length. Now the fun really starts. New parts. Who doesn't love new parts? Using two Allen keys taped together, I was able to make a chain stay to help me connect the chain. As you can see, it works well. After fitting the new derailleur, I couldn't shift to the largest cog. I adjusted all the limit screws and the cable, but it wouldn't work. Last thing to do was replace the gear cable, which was much easier than previous shifters I've worked on. There must have been a kink somewhere in the old cable, as this new cable worked a dream. You can hear when I go under the large cog, there is a lot of noise. This was due to the derailleur being too close to the cassette, so I needed to adjust the B-screw to increase the gap. Much better. You can hear the consistent thudding, meaning the cable length needs to be adjusted. As the L and H screws have already been set, my cable length is pretty much perfect. I make the adjustment at the barrel adjuster on the shifter. 
a couple of anti-clockwise turns and you can hear how smooth she's running. Here I'm adjusting the L-limit screw by putting the chain onto the largest gear on the cassette and the smallest gear on the front sprocket, then adjusting the L-screw so that there is no chain rub. Same goes for the H-screw, except you're on the smallest cog on the rear and largest sprocket on the front. When adjusting the H-screw, you must hold tension on the lever to accurately see your adjustment. Now, just a little bit of chain lube, and we're all done. This lube is a wax-based dry lube. It's much better than using things like WD-40, as it dries on the chain and prevents dirt buildup. Time for me to take the rain for a test ride. You've been biking with Birdie. Have a good one.